everyone, and welcome to this walkthrough of the tech scout for the Labor Day tournament with Mr. RJTV. Welcome, buddy. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing fine. It's the day before the tournament, and uh, I am i couldn't be more excited. Always, I guess like a kid on Christmas, the day before the tournament. <laughs> so it's, going too, to, <laughs> it's going to be awesome. We're both going for gold, as always, and uh, hopefully we will bring some knowledge to you with the text guides here. I know the text is very hard to read here on the screen, but check out the video des description down below. You will be able to get the link to the text guides on Imgur, so you can download it yourself, print it out if you want to, or just save it on your computer. Do not forget to subscribe here to the channel for more content. We do have a 20K giveaway coming up when, and hopefully when we, yeah, like hopefully reach 20K subscribers. So, Yes, what can we say about this? We do have nine holes and uh, like I need to uh, a disclaimer first uh, There is a problem at the moment at Imgur, so I can't get the holes in the right order So I'm just going to scroll a little bit more here But if you see that when you go into Imgur, then you're going to be able to uh, uh, See that yourself uh, So you not see it as any problem. So yeah, all the nine holes are there, but not in the right order. So, okay. <laughs> now we need to breathe and we need to start. But first, I want to hear Labor Day tournament, RJ, a mix of holes. What is your initial thought about the tournament? Um, I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. I really liked what they did last tournament where they opened up a whole tour and you played nothing but the tournament holes for practice. Um, I hope to see that again in the future implemented as to where this one was a little bit harder to do that. But just based off of the courses alone, uh, Tour 6 is a lot of fun. Tour 7 is a lot of fun. And uh, what do we got? A little bit of Tour 4 in there. So, uh, or 5, 4, 6, uh, whatever. They're all fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have most of the tours, so we can just cover that directly. For Rookie, we do have tour number four, we do have tour number six. Tour number four, the Milano, tour number six, Southern Pines. You cannot find the Santa Ventura. Uh, they are supposedly to be on tour number two, but they are not there. So you can only practice six of the nine holes for uh, from the Frontier Rookie Division. Pro and Expert, you, do, uh, ca you can find all the nine holes. Tour number seven for Santa Ventura, tour number nine for Milano, and tour number 11 for Southern Pines. So, let's start here directly with hole number one, par five. We do have three lines. Uh, some, some crazy shots can be made here, but I want to hear your thoughts how to play this one, RJ. Well, personally, as a rookie, uh, covering the rookie aspects of this, I would go with surprise, surprise, the black line. <laughs> uh, because it's conservative and you're setting yourself up for a, um, a little bit more difficult shot on your second attempt. However, if you end up in the rough by going to the right or by going up the middle, then you're not going to be able to make it with your second shot. Now, you could use a quarterback... Uh, and apply a bunch of curl and side spin to the right. Um, but that's kind of a blind shot. You know, us rookies, we don't really know exactly if we put full curl on exactly where we'll end up. So I'm going black line, uh, extra mile, tighten, not so much for the first shot. Well, kind of for the first shot, but more so for the second shot to make sure we can reach for the rough bump. Um, I like... Uh, putting some curl on. I, I, I got full curl on there because, you know, most of us have lower level extra miles. If you have a level extra mile seven, definitely you might want to trim down on some of that curl. Full top spin, full right spin, of course, wind permitting. Uh, we haven't been able to see the wind yet. Um, but, you know, you basically want to get up towards the top and the right-hand side of the fairway on the left-hand side. I'd like to bring a more accurate club for my second shot, but I just, I'm not sure we can reach with our lower level clubs. So I got the big dog in there. I'm not a big fan of doing big dog rough bumps, but I believe it's necessary here. Just make sure you hit that rough so you don't go sailing in the back. Yes, and for prone expert and for master, I would say like, like 
the most common line will be the black line. The white line, as you can see, as already mentioned as well, we do need a lot of curl to get there. The only reason I would be playing according to the white line if we, if we, if we would be having a lot of headwind when we're playing from the second tee. Other than that, then it's black line or it's even the blue line. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the blue line because that is definitely going to be in play. It does mean that you do need to have a club with a lot of topspin and topspin uh, is i would have to say either an upgraded big topper big topper level four five or six or seven of course as well if you have it maxed uh, other than that is the thor hammer level five level six level seven or the apocalypse level six or level seven sure for those that are playing pro might not have those upgraded that much but for expert could be someone that has that and going for that bounce before the rough in the middle bouncing in the rough uh, by that little island in the middle of the bunker then rolling on onto the fairway it sounds difficult but it's not that uh, difficult of a shot and that will definitely give us a slight better chance as we are just in the middle and it's an easier time to hit the rough in my opinion from the middle hmm when it comes to the clubs it all comes down to the wind in my opinion if we do get uh, like some sort of a headwind then i would love to pack the big dog or the cataclysm if not then i would go with the sniper for the accuracy and the ball guide uh, so it kind of yeah again the wind uh, decides a lot here I uh, like for the regular ball, Titan, Kingmaker for pro, uh, for expert, I would say Kingmaker, maybe a dead ball if we have a lot of wind in our face. And for master, it's going to be a Kingmaker most of the time. So, then we do have hole number one, part five. I would say eagle hole, not that much of an albatross hole. Sure, possible, but yeah, it's going to be hard to make that rough bump good. So, I'm going to scroll down to hole number two, a part three. And I want to hear, in a rookie perspective, how do we play this one? You know, it all depends on the direction of the wind. Um, if we have a perfectly horizontal wind, left to right or right to left, I would say we could definitely attempt a rough bump. Uh, so I, I would like to bring the backbone. Now, keep in mind, I'm talking about like a pure side wind, nothing that'll push you up a little bit to where you hit the green and go flying, nothing that'll push you back and leave you in the sand. However, it's more than likely we're not going to get that. So I would go black or white line, still with the backbone, dependent on which way we're, uh, you know, the wind is blowing. And uh, I would just put a uh, navigator in, knock down some of that wind. You don't need the full side spin of a quasar or anything quite like that because we're also going to be using some curl backbones lower level not low low level but they have enough backspin for this hole so you get that backspin um you, i would put full right spin on and full right curl if i'm going for the left side i would do the opposite if i was going for the uh, right side and you can get a you can get a hole in one it's not easy but you can definitely, you, you main thing is you want to get on the green. You don't want to get a par here. Agreed. Agreed, though. Uh, so from from second tee, uh, I would I would take it in uh, different ways here. Second tee and third tee uh, for itself. So second tee, uh, it builds a little bit about that horizontal wind. Uh, if we're having that wind, we're definitely going to go for the rough bump every single time. Because that is a good way for us to get a hole in one if we're having some slight tailwind slight headwind with that horizontal wind then we're going to go for the rough bump as well we do and should be as good to adjust for the wind at this level like for pro expert and uh, for pro and expert that we should be able to play that shot have in mind you're playing downhill so you will have to add 10 percent in your adjustment really have that in mind an easy example for pro and expert is if you have horizontal wind and if you uh, if you play with a sniper you're most likely going to be in medium distance of your club then you do adjust for max distance of your club that is an easy way to kind of take away the percentages and make uh, make yourself an easier time to hit that rough if we do get like massive tailwind, massive headwind, then we play either black line or white line, as RJ say, depending on uh, which way the wind is blowing. 
Then from second team we're going to play with either Sniper or the Guardian. The Guardian is going to be absolutely a perfect club with the amount of backspin that we do have because we're going to be in between clubs playing with a power 3 ball with a Sniper and then it requires some headwind otherwise we're going to come in long. So I would put the Guardian as my club if we're going to bounce either right or left. Other than that I'm going to play with the sni Sniper. From Master T or like the third T then we are going to play either right or left side if straight horizontal win sure we can rough bump that one as well but for the target when it comes to a court portrait back or the rocket it's going to be big so we can't uh, that rely on the rough bump that much i remember a shot from the latest time in master might going to show you on stream hard to explain but it's going to uh, involve the Guardian and some backspin and bounce from left side. We'll see what type of win we're going to get. See if I'm going to explain that even more. So, okay, uh, hole number two and we're going to continue to hole and number three. To, to add when it comes to uh, um, a part three as well. Is that where do we have hole number three? We're going to, just going to... Uh, there we have hole number three. Oh my god, it's like such... Not in order. So, again, for a part three use a more wind resistant ball if not having a power three ball use a wind five ball like for an example bandera santa ball um Oceania ball or something like that if you do have that will absolutely make it a bit easier for you hole number three i would consider this one to be the hardest uh, hardest hole in the tournament uh because this hole is going to be tough no matter what type of wind we have so rj let's start uh, well, the way I always play this hole is with an extra mile because we're going to need the distance. And to the right-hand side, there's like a, a long bowling pin type uh, a fairway you could land on. It gets very narrow, but I have yet to hit it in the rough. Um, I don't know if that's pure luck, but because of that fact, that is the one way that I take. Our extra miles are barely going to reach we're, we're going to be right near that bottom sand trap so um you know with with that sometimes you might even need to overpower some so i have a titan or a kingmaker if we have wind that's at our back i think a titan will be fine but any other type of wind that could blow us off course we want to tame that wind down as much as we can and go with the kingmaker now with the kingmaker i would go with a lot of right spin, uh, maybe not full, maybe full. You know, you'll see your ball guide on there, but there is a bit of a slope there. One back spin because it's so easy to roll to, to roll completely off, rolling the sand, rolling the um, the rough there, and uh, no curl or anything. But that'll set you up nice for a second shot. I would bring my backbone or Saturn. It's up to you, whichever you prefer. Backbone's usually a little bit more accurate with just a little bit of backspin to jump over the water for the second shot. And uh, I think we can get there um, in three. Definitely. This is, I will have to start with from second tee. Uh, I, in my opinion, this is a birdie hole. There will be a lot of pars in this one as well. We have been having this one in like three earlier tournaments uh, if i'm not mistaken and we have been having basically the same type of wind every single time and that has been a uh, tailwind combined with sides side wind to the right so we have been having that arrow like in the middle of being tailwind or crosswind to the right so uh i for some reason i uh, i think we will get some type of tailwind then we are going to try from the second tee to play exactly as we would be playing from the first tee as for bouncing on that little tiny fairway on the right and trying to put ourselves up as close to the top as possible if we're having some decent tail when we can try to be even bounce on that fairway to go over to the next fairway which is going to put us up for a wedge or for a short iron important in my opinion here is that you do go with a club with at least four to six bars of the backspin for your long iron because if we're going to have tailwind for the second shot then we're going to have a pin that's then very short on the green and then backspin is going to be necessary even if we bounce uh, over the water there on the top have in mind 
as also already mentioned it slopes a little bit down to the uh, to the left need to count that with side spin or with some curl i would go side spin but that applies also if you're going to go and try to bounce it over to the second fireway you need to curl it and uh, use more side spin than you actually think you can see the blue line as well with some difficult headwind then we could try to use the top spin go left or we can play according to the black line uh, and play short and the black line is going to be the play if we play from the 30. Uh, we played like that the last time, so I do see that will be the play this time as well, as it's going to be tough to reach for that narrow fairway to the right. So we're going to play it short and go from that distance. You can see for the club selections, we do. Uh, I do suggest uh, Goliath and B52 as a long iron from the second tee if you play pro and expert. You can play basically with whatever long iron you have. It's all about personal preference. Then when it comes to master, you're going to put either the sniper or the cataclysm. The guardian could be a club as well, depending on how you're going to play it. Uh, the mo most of the times you're going to need distance for your second shot in master. So I would say cataclysm would be an excellent choice if you do have it on uh, unlocked. So, okay, a lot of talk about hole number three, but it's a birdie hole in my opinion, no matter what type of wind, and that is the hard part with it. Doesn't matter what type of wind, we're going to struggle. So we're going to scroll back here, and we're going to go to hole number four. And hole number four is a par three that I show a white line that I don't really know why I'm showing, but we do have a black line as well. So RJ, how do we play hole number four? Well, this may surprise you, but I'm going super aggressive and taking the black line. <laughs> uh, no, actually, this is not the aggressive line. The white line would definitely be a little bit more aggressive because you could easily end up in the rough uh, like I did when they first came out with this course. Uh, going with the black line, once again, you might notice a trend here. We're going with a lot of Tour 2. I believe it's Tour 2 clubs. The backbone uh, seems like the perfect club here. Now, you are going to want to bring a club with a decent amount of side spin. And also, I'm sure you can tell looking at your screen right now, we don't have much room for error. So I have a uh, backbone generally around full backspin and then try to aim your target as close to the middle of the second. Like it's almost like an eight. It almost looks like in the fairway there where, where your first bounce is going to be. Obviously, we're landing in the top half of that eight and then use as much of that backspin to stop that ball on the green, but also a lot of right spin. I think a quasar will be enough. You don't have to go crazy with the katana at this lower level, but the green slopes towards the left. So that could leave you with either a really hard putt or, um, well, yeah, it'll leave you with a really hard putt. <laughs> so a really hard putt is just as bad as missing the fairway altogether because the, we don't have epic level clubs for, for putting or anything. So with that being said, I will say, um, you know, yeah, I would, I would really like the Quasar with the full right spin. Now we're, we're not necessarily going for a hole in one with this attempt. What we're doing is we're securing the birdie. Now you could put a little less side spin on aim for the hole and, and go for the ACE. But if you don't have your measurements just right and your ball goes just a little bit beyond the hole without stopping, I think that also is going to funnel to the left. So I like playing this one actually a little more conservative that way. Yeah, and that is the same for second and for third tee as well. First, I need to mention like for the elevation part, we are playing slightly downhill. I would add 10% in my adjustment when I do play. Uh, we are from the second tee going to play with a wood club and then if we do have some type of tailwind then we're going to play guardian it, other than that we're going to play with the sniper the reason we're going to play guardian in tailwind is that we need more backspin than the sniper have even maxed out so other than that it's around six bars of backspin is going to be the the general amount of backspin to use with the sniper uh, in like crosswind headwind four and a half to five with a tailwind then we need to go seven or eight because the thing that we do want again and RJ mentioned it very clearly we don't want to fall down to the left 
if we do that we are going to see that as a 50 50 pot as we're going to have to overpower our pot and that is a pot that even the best players in the world do miss sometime so it could be depending on the wind be smart even from the third uh, from the second and from the 30 to play it a bit more conservative might not want to risk that much if you're not 100% certain that you're going to hit your ball perfect and be spot on with your adjustment so but in the end of course we are always looking for a way to make an hole in one uh, but l trust the ball guideline really think about the elevation really think about if we do have crosswind that the first bounce is going to be affected by the wind that we're having so we need to adjust our ball guideline position for that as well so it's a tough part three i would use a wind resistant ball big 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 time so if you do have some wind five balls use those in my opinion uh, it's it's worth it uh, to secure that birdie and with a with a portion of luck get that hole in one hole number five now we come to i would have to say this must be probably if not the easiest one but one of the easier ones that we do have in the tournament i pray for some tailwind because this is going to be fun if so but what is your thought about hole number five? Yeah, this uh, this hole, they could very easily make a par four, in my opinion. However, uh, I'm very happy that it's a par five. <laughs> um, now, I like I, I have been playing this hole, obviously, with the extra mile because you play this this tour with the extra mile. But generally, I put some backspin on because I like to end up where that first box is. So when you put backspin on your extra mile, in a lot of cases, you can actually go with a quarterback. So if you have a hard time hitting a perfect shot and you want a more forgiving club, you could go with a quarterback with some top spin, uh, maybe a little bit more power in that ball. I'm not sure. But either way, you don't want to end up in the rough. Um, you can probably make it if you have a Nirvana, but rookies, we should not have Nirvanas. Um, you know, if you if you do end up in the rough and I would also say uh, for your second shot there, let's see, uh, these numbers got me all <laughs> messed up. Sorry about that, Tom. Um, OK, here we are. I would go with a sniper if you have it, because you're not going to use much top spin or backspin depending on where you land and how close to the to the black box you actually get. The sniper is awesome because it gives you that beautiful ball guide and 100% accuracy right out the box. But the Viper is also a very viable option. Um, not It doesn't have much topspin. The Viper probably has a little bit more topspin depending on where you're at. Either way, you should easily be able to get very close to the hole with the sniper and some good senses of the wind i think this could easily be an albatross hole especially if we get a favorable wind in rookie yeah i totally agree this this is uh, this could be a par four hole sometimes uh, the last times we have had this uh, hole in the tournament we have had tailwind every single time uh, and that from the second tee and from the third tee that applies a hook shot which is going to potentially put yourself either on green or very close to the green it's also possible to go with max curl and be able to get close if we do have some tailwind we do need to have a berserker though or a turbo ball or a snow globe ball especially from the 30 but if having tailwind then we are going to go full blast trying to get as close to the green as possible uh, if we're not having that then we're going to play it exactly the same way as from yeah from every team straightforward line up use the sniper and try to get the albatross there from distance so this is a kind of a uh, a hole that has been here already from the start there is not that many obstacles with it from second and from 30 if we're not having a massive headwind we are going to reach from basically wherever if we hit in the rough or in the bunkers so that is not something to be afraid of uh, either so the thing that we need to Think about here is how to maximize the opportunity to get an albatross because get, getting an albatross in the in the tournament is going to give you a big a, a good tiebreaker and having a good tiebreaker coming into the weekend round that you do have an albatross your opponent hasn't uh, an albatross and you get the same score that could potentially put you first 
uh, before that uh, that player because you were accurate enough to get that albatross on hole number five but it's a it's an easy course and if you're not getting the eagle then you have done something um, yeah a major mistake in my opinion uh, but use the wind if we get one i'm going to show you a hook shot if we do get tailwind but that won't be uh, out until of course we know the wind that we're going to have so let's go to hole number six another i would ha have to say another a little bit more easier course uh so hole number five hole number six we need to if we get to breathe a little bit uh, so i am very interested how does uh, the rookies play hole number six well, I really like the fact that Playdemic lets us pick at least our balls on, um, you know, before or not beforehand, but during the actual tournament, because depending on the wind, you might want to get a little bit more aggressive. Now, I like to take the black line, but the white line is definitely a viable option, too. What you have here, though, is if you take the black line, the 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 scariness or the, the problem you might face is landing in the sand trap there off of your second bounce or also, you know, if you misjudge the wind or something and hit the rough with your first bounce. But these are things that if you're paying close attention to should not happen. I would go uh, with some topspin. Uh, you're going to need a certain amount of topspin to make sure you don't clip the rough. Um, but you don't have to land anywhere particular on that pad. It's not like you have to get up to the very top by the sand trap or anything. You just want to land safely somewhere in the middle there, somewhere conservative. Uh, maybe even uh, right spin, maybe a little bit of right curl, uh, just to ensure you stay away from the sand. And this is one of those where a little bit tougher first shot sets up a nice, easy second shot. So I would go, I would bring my Hornet uh you know, with this one, because your Hornet's going to be a very accurate club. And I think you could chip in from here. You know, um, I think it's worth the chance. You're not going to need all the backspin of the Thor. Uh, the white line is another excellent way to go. Um, however, this one gives you the easier drive to stay on the green. But then your approach, you're going to have some elevation issues and you're going to have a hard time lining up your uh, second shot to literally get it for a chip in. And then of course that blue line, uh, you know, if you have the uh, big topper with you, that's definitely an option too, depending on the direction the wind is blowing. Yeah, and you can hear us talk a lot about how uh, how we're going to play it. Like, oh, if the wind is this, if the wind is that, but that is how it works when it comes to the tournament. The wind do affect uh, the way to play or like the play styles a lot and that is the same for playing from the second tee the blue line is definitely in play if you're playing from the second tee and you can play that one with whatever type of wind if you're going to have an upgraded apocalypse or an upgraded thor's hammer however if we are not uh, having an upgraded thor's hammer or an apocalypse we do have the big topper Big topper and a berserker ball with, uh, will make you reach to the first blue mark that we do have there on that tiny bit of fairway. That will potentially put us very close to the green and have a wedge for the pin. But if you're going to use a big topper with a berserker, then we need to have at least crosswind. If we're not having that, then we should be playing either right or left side. So either black line or white line. I do like to go black line, that is the way that I've been playing it most of the times, but I would have to say, kind of like personal preference, sure, the elevation in the, uh, from the left side, but playing from the second tee, you're going to have the club so we can kind of counter for that, and with, with that I mean using the thorn from the left side would, will make it uh, possible for you to aim directly on the green with the backspin that the thorns, thorn does have. From the third tee, we're going to play right side. We're going to try to bounce our ball on the fairway, bouncing it in the rough, rolling out towards the black, towards the second black marker. You can use a wind five ball here uh, because you're going to reduce the wind for the second shot. Uh, if having tailwind, then I would try to go with a berserker or with a snow globe, try to go full blast, try to put myself close to the green, but 30 most likely going to be black line. I would say choose clubs that is a lot of backspin with, especially if you're playing from the second and from the third tee, 
because if having some massive tailwind towards the green from either right or left side you need the backspin from either the long iron or the short iron and that you do have so uh, I would uh, just to end hole six I do see this one to be an eagle opportunity especially from second tee I would almost say that if we do have crosswind or tailwind from second tee that is a must eagle in my opinion to win the tournament from third tee it's going to be a regular par four first tee as well but definitely possible to get something extra there three more holes to go and we do have the southern pines and the southern pines is not that uh, common maybe for you either if you play from the front tee or second tee because it's tour number six for rookies tour number uh, 11 for pro expert and masters so how do we rookies play hole number seven well the the rookies with the snipers are going to have an unfair advantage here um, and the reason being is that extremely long ball guide will show you a little bit of curl at the very top. And you can trust that ball guide if you know how to make your wind adjustments. And, um, you know, it really depends on the way wind's blowing. If wind's blowing into your face, you may want to put like one bar of top spin on it. If wind is at your back, you want to might want to play with one or two bars of back spin. However, either way the wind's blowing, you want to put full right spin on. So I'd probably go with at least a quasar, um, something with two side spin, as that's pretty important. I don't really care for curl too much on this. You could put a little bit on if you just want to kind of ensure that you go over. But I would just say trust the little line that it gives you. So many people are going to end up stuck at the top. Or, you know, the, the ball's going to drop back down for a little bit more of a difficult putt. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if you have a Viper, a Viper will work as well. Although at the very end, it won't show you the curl. But that's what you want to do. This is kind of like a, a hill. We're playing on the side of a hill. And the, the back of the putting green is the top of the hill. And it all slopes down. So you're going to use that. It's like a putt-putt hole, actually. But it can be tricky. So just uh, make sure you have your wind adjustments right. Um, might not be a bad idea, if you have it, to use a katana uh, in rookie as well, because knocking down that wind, I think, is really just going to give you one less thing to worry about. Ball guideline is the key here. Uh, RJ was in, uh, in for that with the sniper, and I agree uh, if we talk uh, second and third tee as well. Second uh, tee, prone expert, we're going to play with a quarterback, or a sniper depending on the wind because we're going to ha be in between clubs uh, if we're going to uh, like trying to use a sniper with headwind and trying to use a driver in tailwind so tailwind we're going to play with uh, a wood club uh, headwind we're going to play with a driver and with crosswind we're going to play with whatever we like because then you have to decide either you're going to play with uh, with the, the wood club with more topspin or you're going to have to play with the driver with more backspin uh, I like the quarterback here due to, uh, to the ball guideline and I would have to say use a ball again use a katana use a kingmaker use that max side spin to the right if we're going to have a crosswind from right to left then we need to apply some curl because the key here is that we need the ball to hit that fairway in such straight way so we're getting uh, get an initial push that we are looking for with the ball guideline from the beginning. The ball is going to be affected a little bit more by the wind as we're going to play downhill. So I would add a 10% to my normal adjustment here. And when it comes to playing with the wood club, you're going to play with either without uh, top uh, top spin or you're going to play with one bar of top spin. With your driver, you're going to play as in general two to three bars of backspin, uh, depending on how strong the headwind is. Because you do want to get up to the hill, fall back down towards the pin. And this is, even though you might haven't played it yet, this is a good chance for a hole in one. I played it a lot of times on Tour 11, which makes it hard for many players to practice from the, uh, from the second tee. From the third tee, it is absolutely possible to get a hole in one there as well. Here we are going to play with the quarterback or we're going to play with the Thor's hammer. If we're having massive headwind, I would pack the Thor's hammer because then we do get more distance 
other than that we're going to play with the quarterback to give ourselves that accuracy and the ball guideline for a potential hole in one for hole number seven hole number eight yeah tough par four i will have to say so i'm very curious here how do we play hole number eight okay um wow i do have notes on this hole <laughs> but uh <laughs> just looking at it I, I noticed a couple things here now i when when i was coming up in tour six i like to play the right side the white line and i got pretty good at it the problem is if you make just the slightest mistake you can easily end up hitting the rough by the first circle and then your ball goes nowhere or you could land in a sand trap and you're not going to be able to make it on the green in two. And I think this hole, you definitely got to make it into the green in two. Now, you definitely are going to need the extra mile for diff distance and full top spin to go on the right side, as well as a ball. I would go with a kingmaker, um, a kingmaker or at least a katana, because you're going to want to knock down the wind. You're not going to want to contend with as much wind. Full right spin, full right curl, full top spin. In most cases, unless you have a strong wind blowing to the right, then you might be a little concerned about possibly ending up in the rough. But then that sets you up for a excellent second shot where potentially if you have, you know, a favorable wind, uh, you know your wind and everything, you could go ahead and get the eagle there. However, for us rookies, I also am saying I recommend the black line. Now, when I say I also recommend the black line, this is dependent on whether you have a Saturn and or a Guardian. You're going to need a bunch of backspin, in my opinion, because the rough bump is very tricky here. So I would go with black line. I would probably go quarterback with some a kingmaker or if you have any special balls, a power four, power five ball and try to get that drive up as, as close as possible without going into the rough. So you might have to put a lot of right spin, um, some right curl on there. And that's why I say I would have both the Saturn and the Guardian in the bag, just in case you barely are able to make it into um, long iron range. And then you have yourself a full backspin shot, which will land you safely on the green. However, your chances and your likelihood of an eagle are way lower taking the black line. However, completely forget that it even exists if you take the white line and end up in the sand or if you end up in the rough. So both sides have pros and cons. It's up to you and how you feel about your skill and what clubs you have in your bag. Yeah, you summarized it very, very well because prone expertise is going to be basically the same. If we do have a wind that allows us to go on the right side, I do suggest to go with that side. It gives us an opportunity for the eagle, which you, I will have to say you don't have from the left side. It's very, very tough to get the eagle from the left side so the left side should be a way to play if we're having a strong crosswind right to left or we're having headwind headwind or a strong crosswind right to left i would say take away the possibility uh, to take away the risk of playing right side to play a more open shot for the left side then you do see a blue line you also see a black line the blue line comes towards as a rough bump then you need to have at least a three to five bars of top spin and you really need to be accurate on that type of shot because if you just go slightly too low on that rough you're going to fall down into the bunker and if you're going slightly too much then you're going to bounce on the green over the green into the rough so the black line there uh, in if you're going to play the black line like the second part of the black line then you need to have as much curl as possible on your club a sniper like level 8 9 10 is going to be perfect there as you're going to have to go with max backspin as well because then you're going to line up just after the bunkers and then curl it in may give you that push with the backspin combined with the curl so the ball kind of like hits the ground and bounces up on the green to give you a birdie pot 
So if we do get to win, I'm just going to summarize it again. If we do get to win, play right side. If we do not get to win, then play left side. For Master, last time we played this hole, we had Headwind. And that was a killer. And of course, that helps out big time if you're going to have an upgraded uh, Apocalypse or you're going to have an upgraded Thor's Hammer with a topspin. Uh, so be, uh, be prepared for playing it left side. And then, uh, depending on the wind, we need to have either power uh, or we're going to be having a lot of like curl to play with. We do need a mix there. That is uh, hard to get the correct club for it. I hope we can play right side, but I do believe left side for third T and master. If you do have an up upgrade up cataclysm, that will be a huge advantage for you. Other than that, we we'll just hope that we're going to reach with the sniper or with the guardian from the left side from third T. So, last but not least, we're going to go with hole number 9. It looks like we're going to play like for ages on this hole uh, with all the lines and uh, the distance that it is to the green. So, I'm very curious here, in a rookie perspective, what is the best way to play this hole? All right. Well, I have not yet opened Tour 11, so really the only knowledge I have on this hole is in rookie besides playing it in tournaments. What I like to do is, it, it again, dependent on the wind, if you have anything except for a headwind, I like the white line. You're going to bounce over the sand trap. Now, bring yourself a power ball, um, more so for your second shot, especially if we have a wind at our backs. But we're going to jump right over that sand and also put full left spin on that ball because I've seen balls bounce on the actual fairway too close to the rough and then they roll down almost into the drink. Also, you want the full top spin because we want to take those trees out of play and go as far forward as possible uh, because that second shot is a very long shot. Now, just not to get too far ahead of myself, if we do have wind in our face, you've got to take the black line. Many people are going to try to force their way over uh, to make that jump. They're going to be pulling back, overpowering all the way. You're going to see some good shots. You're going to see some hooks. You're going to see some perfect shots end up in the sand. It's not worth it. It's better off just going over to the right like that black line shows. One thing that is good about the black line is it does take the trees out of play. Either way, you're going to want to bring uh, your big dog because this is a very far distance. If you can get on the green in two, you've had backwind on both shots, I would have to say. And uh, that would probably be the white line. Now, with the big dog, you do have a decent amount of curl. In most cases, those trees are going to be in your way. Don't let that bother you so much. If your line is a little bit broken, not a lot, don't aim for the middle of the trees, but if your line is a little bit broken, kind of play with it to see where you want to land and then go ahead and move it back to where it looks like you're going to hit it into the trees, but put a lot of right spit or right curl on it. You might even want to use like a uh, something with a, a level three side spin and kind of counteract that spin a little bit. I'm sorry, the curl with some left spin. The curl is just to get around the trees. The left spin is to try to get you back as close to the green as possible and bring yourself a wedge with some backspin because we're not done yet, guys. Remember that turtle shell hole that we had? Uh, was it last tournament or the tournament before? Well, this one isn't as bad, but it's definitely a turtle shell type shape, or at least there's a slope in the back which could get you in trouble as well. So I really think there's going to be a lot of, let's see, one, two, three. I think this is a birdie hole for most people because of that. If you're very skilled and confident, sure, you can try chipping it in. But even then, I would say try chipping it in with backspin. Anyone who watches my streams know I love chipping with a bunch of topspin. I'm sorry for talking so much, but uh, there's just so much to explain on this hole. And Tommy, one thing I have never seen that I'm really looking forward to, I hope you explain it, 
I didn't know that orange line was possible, so I would love to see uh, how you use that. But I'm sure you've got plenty to say already. Yeah, it, it, there is plenty to say to to uh, hole number nine in in this tournament, and it is one of my favorite holes when it comes to the par fives in the game. Is only on tour eleven as well, and you can really. This is one of the few holes where you can really win the win the hole outright and don't have to play the shootout. Especially if you're playing uh, playing against a player that maybe takes uh, too much of a risk. And for those that follow uh, my stuff and uh, know, know yeah, check my streams and stuff like that, knows that I play often very conservative. If I'm not feeling like the the reward of taking a risk is is uh, is high. So the thing that we are going to start with from the second tee is if you have either a big topper or a bunch of tailwind in your in, in your back then you're going to place uh, like either straight over the bunker or we're going to bounce before the bunker the big topper there with a the berserker is going to be a really good play and i would have to uh, say that for rookie as well even though you have a big topper level one for rookie you're going to be able to bounce over the bunker have a bunch of top spin to roll kind of far on uh, after that bunker and that goes for pro and that goes for expert as well if having headwind from second tee it's not possible uh, but with crosswind or tailwind from the second tee it's definitely possible the drive is going to be affecting your ball 20 percent extra than normal so have that in mind especially with strong crosswind so you're not going all over the place and wondering what happened so that will be the ultimate way to play like bouncing on the bunker or going directly over to the bunk over the bunker depending on the wind like the strength in the tailwind for the second shot if we're going to follow the white line there we're going to still need to have um, a wood club with a lot of power to be able to go directly over that bunker as you can see there if you zoom in over that rough you can see both the orange marker and also the white second marker to be the, that is kind of crucial to be able to read for the green too because it doesn't matter if you have an upgraded cataclysm or a big dog you can't bounce before the rough to get to the green in two so you need to reach over so if we do have tailwind for the first shot we're going to have some slight tailwind for the second shot then we're going to be able to reach over but many of the cases even with crosswind we're going to have a hard time to reach over the rough for the second shot if having headwind for the drive we can either play left according to the black line or we can play right the right side is kind of interesting that is a new way that uh, that players are trying to find the regular tour play uh, that they can play because it's possible to reach over the water there but i will have to say this in a tournament we are going to have the same type of win for the first shot as we're going to have for the second with some slight variation so if we're having tailwind as i said then we're going to go over the bunker if we're having headwind then sure we can play right side in tour play not in tournament play because that means you're going to have headwind for the second shot as well and then you're not going to reach over the reason that line the, the orange line is there is for a regular tour game because then you don't know if you're going to have tailwind headwind crosswind for your second shot even if you had tailwind uh, headwind for your drive because and then that could be a gamble to play right side to try to reach over there other than that we uh, play according to the blue line to still having a shot for the green in three so to summarize this very tough part five is tailwind white line headwind or wind that you can't reach over the bunker black line and then you need uh, a wood club with a lot of power no matter which way you're going to play a uh, big topper could be absolutely perfect and many of the cases this is going to be a birdie hole this is going to be a 100 percent birdie hole if you're going to not reach over the bunker and it's going to be in 50 50 cases going to be a birdie hole even if you reach over the bunker but the if you do get an eagle on this hole nine you're going to have a absolutely one plus according to uh, like uh, comparing to your opponents at least i would say about like 20 30 40 50 percent of the other players that is most likely going to get a birdie so we'll see what type of win we're going to play with hole number nine and it's definitely a very very interesting hole to end up with 30 yeah then it's the same uh, tailwind straight uh, forward according to the white line other uh, otherwise then it's going to be the black line i remember the last time we had this one in the summer major 
uh, the, uh, sorry, in the spring major, and then we actually played it according to the orange line with a hook shot over the water. So, ladies and gentlemen, this was the walkthrough of the text guide with me and Mr. RGTV. Uh, uh, almost a 50 minute long video uh, fully packed with knowledge to help you improve your game and also help you getting a good score in the tournament. The tournaments are crucial in the game of Gold Clash to boost your bankroll, boost your uh, like boost your account in general. So I'm looking forward to it. I will be here tomorrow 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. How does your week look? Are you, I kind of remember now you are streaming late late and late but like for us in Europe you stream late on Mondays or how does it look for you uh not this Monday here in the United States we're celebrating Labor Day so my doctor's office is closed so I'm hoping to get on at six o'clock all week long but you know sometimes things happen <laughs> um I, w I know the video's already gone long but um I just wanted to ask you just about the drive because I've never attempted it mm -hmm. with the big topper. So speaking rookie here, yeah. you're saying even a big topper level one could get over the sand. Are you? Would you say you would bring uh, a kingmaker or a power four ball, or you know, just just so the people who are watching for rookie, because this sounds like it's actually a better option than the extra mile. Yeah, in my opinion, it is, and I would take a power three ball. That is necessary. Titan would be possible as well. And the thing that I'm kind of uh, valuing that too is that we are most likely going to have tailwind for rookie like all the par fives for like yeah at least the last five ten tournaments in rookie has been tailwind on the par fives so that is going to be possible then with a par th power three ball and the big topper to bounce over there even with crosswind i will have to say and like the big topper has been coming a favorite club for me the last couple of tournaments as as with the top spin it, it allows you to play a shot that you can't do with an extra mile level eight for an example so um so yeah a power three ball is in my opinion necessary might be able with a power one ball with an upgrade a big topper but i would play with a power three ball especially as you said for the for the second shot in general so uh, but getting over that bunker crucial so uh, de definitely something that i will be playing on on all my accounts if the wind allows to all right, yeah, then in that case, I change what I said. Definitely bring the big topper if you find that we are having tailwind because I do believe that would take those trees out of play, forcing you to use that uh, right curl. Correctamente. So, everyone, uh, thanks a lot for watching this video. Please make a comment in the comment section below if you do have any type of questions. So, and we will be here during the week and uh, yeah, celebrating playing the Labor Day tournament. Good luck in the Labor Day tournament. And the final words from you as always, RJ, how do we end it? You're on the channel. Happy stroking. <laughs> Happy stroking, everyone. <laughs>